guys and girls, welcome to Zilla Cabs. Um, today's a bank holiday, so we thought we'd come in and just have a laugh. Yeah. Just have a bit of fun with the gear we've got. Um, so today, something I've wanted to do for a while, just for a laugh, Marshall Head, Mesa Boogie Cab versus Mesa Boogie Head, Marshall Cab. Um, this, for me, this comes from, in the past, I used to use uh, Marshall Heads, and Marshall cabs, but I, for some reason, I always wanted a Mesa Boogie, um, Mesa Boogie cab. Yeah. I also remember on the rounds, you know, on the um, the touring routes and stuff, you'd meet people who'd have a Mesa Boogie head, but run out of money and used in a Marshall cab, <laughs> and everyone would be like, "No, you can't do that." So here we go. Yeah, well, that was that was my one of my first setups was okay. uh, Mesa Boogie heads. And a mate's Marshall for by twelve. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, so, what are the? There are some big differences, aren't there, between Marshall and Mesa Boogie four by twelves? Um, yeah. First off, the obvious one that um, people will know is the the speaker. Mm -hmm. So you've got vintage thirties and the standard Marshall speaker these days. Are for the last what thirty almost forty years? Yeah. yeah. Um, is the Celestian G12T75. Um, they get a bit of a bad rep these days, don't they? They do. I think, I think the trouble is, for me, it's not necessarily maybe an every man kind of speaker like a vintage 30 would be, or yeah. a greenback. Like speakers where you can um, pretty much nail on, going to be able to get a, a decent sound. Mm. Um, well, for most people, anyway. Um, there are some... Um, things that people may think of as subtle differences but they actually make a big difference in the tone is the um the wood types the wood types aren't a million miles away from each other it's it's birch ply but yeah messer use um an 18 mil or it'd be known as a three quarter inch in the states um and the the marshall will be a 15 mil uh so slightly thicker on the on the messer so uh i've heard people say before and Quite right to assume it, I suppose, that Marshall cabs look like they're made out of thicker wood. Oh, okay, cabs, yeah. So. And you get this with orange yeah. as well, with the real thick front. What this is, is the wood is an 18 mil. Um, the wood on there is a 15 mil. Maybe we'll get some shots of the back of these cabs. Yeah. That's usually the giveaways of the back where they don't put a beading on. Yeah. On these, you've got a, I think the front of these is about 38 mil. Yeah, so you're going to have like, I know, 22 mil of um, pine. On these and then then your tilex wrap um the messes i don't know what it is it looks about 30 mil or so so they're probably yeah. using like a 12 mil beading on the front and that's how that will hint towards the way the baffle goes in yeah it? so the baffle on both of these the baffles will go in from the back but again that's the next thing that makes the the sound difference will be the messes have a fixed baffle so it's actually it's glued and nailed into place, mm -hmm. so you can't just take it in and out. Uh, Marshall screw theirs in with, I don't know, I'm going to say like 12 or 16 screws. There's enough screws in there. Yeah. Um, so with the thickening up the front, you've got like a little lip, the baffle goes in and it gets fixed against the front. Um, so yeah. So with those two different construction methods in mind, particularly the way the baffle goes in, um, we associate those with different sort of sounds really, don't we? Yeah, I mean, all together, all these separate things add up. So when customers come to Zilla and they want like maybe a more um, focused bottom end sound, we might suggest more of the sort of fixed baffle. Yeah, it's a bit, you imagine, um, this is um, a kind of a extreme example, but you'll find fixed baffles and thicker woods more in base caps. Mm. Um, it gives it's more focused more controlled uh, well it is a bit more controlled but um, at the ex not the expense of uh, like a liveliness but there's with a Marshall cab you get a bit more sometimes life yeah in a bit, it's a bit dynamic more springy. Thing, Damn, yeah. that's yeah. the word um, so it's it's kind of a trade off between all of those but they've all all got their place and you yeah. can use any of the guitar cabs so Joe, what amp did you choose? Right, I've gone for the Road King for this. Um, 
we've got a, quite a few Messer amps and some of them, some of my favourite ones we got are more based on Marshall, so I thought I'd try and veer away from that a bit and just go with an all out and out Messer head. Yeah, I think the, for me, when I think um, Messer Boogie, the first amp I think of is a dual rectifier. rectifier. Yeah. You can get these, I don't know a massive amount about the Roking, but I'm guessing it's got some dual rectifier. Yeah, it's got the, the same circuit as that. Okay, one. cool. Yeah. Um, I think they were, when I was out and about gigging a lot, they were, the dual rectifiers were definitely out there a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone for the uh, JMP. This one's actually Joe's rather than mine. Uh, they sound a little bit different, but... Um, this one was nearer at the this time. This one was closer. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way I run these, um, I just run the, the preamp pretty much flat out yeah. and then get my use the the massive volume here just to get the right kind of uh, balance between what you're doing mm -hmm. um, and I'm boosting it with a, a Thorpey Peacekeeper cool that's a great sounding pedal as well isn't it yeah just to give it that little push yeah it can turn a, a JMP into like an extra channel can't it so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so obviously there's a million sounds available to you on this amp but I've got it set up on channel 3 in, on the vintage mode, which isn't vintagey at all for anyone who knows like rectifier amps. Um, yeah, I think they're sort of sounding a similar amount of gain, aren't they? But um, Yeah, we tried to get it so that one wasn't like ACDC and the other Metallica. Yeah. All right, so earlier we said that uh, back in the day, you used to use a dual rectifier. Mm -hmm. I used to gig with a JMP. Um, how would you set up your amp so talk us through what you'd go for a clean sound yeah. and a drive sound just pub gig stuff um so yeah mine was a two channel one which uh was the same as channel one and three or four on on this so kind of familiar um channel one you can get some nice sounding cleans out of it but I've got to be honest, with this cab, it is sounding a bit more lively than I remember. I mean, it was a long time ago when I was doing that, but um, with the Marshall, it just seems to have a little bit more spring to it or something. I'll just jump in here and say, um, this is actually your Messer cab. Yeah. So I assume at some point you were using the dual rec with the Yeah, with that Messer cab, article. yeah. yeah. Um, so I've got this set clean now, and I think it sounds pretty cool. Let's take a listen to it. So what I'm hearing there is a nice, smooth kind of sound. Yeah. Uh, Joe, um, out of shot, went and twiddled the settings in and it took you 10 seconds, mm. if that, to get that clean sound. That, how would you find that cab, from your, from your memory, is sounding different to if you're using the Messer? The Messer, um, with that kind of tone through it, is a little bit more brittle. It's like there's less place to hide, almost. Okay, cool. This is a little bit more forgiving. Maybe it's just got a bit more, like... I don't know what the words to use, but like sag to it. In the yeah, it's funny that because the T seventy five would often be classed as a bit of a brittle sounding speaker. Right. So that's yeah. um, what age is this cab? That I'm get I I don't know, but I I I want us. I was looking. We've got about I don't know eight or ten Marshall four twelves here, <laughs> and this was the last one I managed to find. I was actually looking for a JCM nine hundred cab. Yeah. For some reason, I want to say this is a JCM nine hundred cab, but I I took a little peek through the um i took the um jack the, plate. the jack plate the stereo yeah. plate thing off which is which actually just broke oh, right. <laughs> and um took a peek inside to make sure it was the t75s yeah and they look real old so cool the reason I, saw... I asked is that um i was talking to a friend recently about this who's um explored a lot of these and some of the older t75s yeah. do have a nicer sweeter sound to them and some of them maybe more modern yeah. ones but... yeah i i think they're probably is something in there actually yeah. this is a good point to say um, take a look at uh, we've done some videos on the T75s before haven't we mm. sort of straight out of the box so take a look at those because they actually the new ones did record pretty good yeah uh, I quite like that yeah. but yeah the I have found that older ones rule of thumb do seem to 
sound cut. I don't know if that's because of the use. Mm. Um, they've had 30 years for breaking in or whatever it is, but they do sound a bit. We always have to bear in mind the like sample to sample speakers sound slightly different as well. Yeah. I mean, they sound very similar in character, but you will get ones that you might prefer to others. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so drive now. Cool, all right. Uh, I've got the foot switch out. So, what's that, channel three? Known as the noisy channel. <laughs> <laughs> mid-range to it um, but I guess maybe that's not the classic sort of rectifier sound that no. people would probably try and coax out on these amps but yeah. I think my ear goes more towards Marshall these days so yeah but I don't know if the cab's adding a lot of Marshall flavor to it but I don't know if you're getting that sense that I am from the mid-range just being like quite chewy and thick yeah 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 I think that sounded great and I th for me that's just straight away I mean I knew this anyway but um, blown the hole you can't use a mess ahead with a Marshall cab mm -hmm. out of the water yeah. um, well one thing I'll say is we did think about uh, using um, a Marshall 412 we've got with the vintage 30s the the older yeah they're probably oh it's a slash cab so they came out in 95 so 25 year old speakers I'm guessing this is something similar that's 2004 I think oh okay well yeah um, but they're both UK made vintage 30s and we yeah. thought it, maybe it's a bit a bit closer but then we thought no we'll go with the classic Marshall speaker which is the T75 yeah alright so what about the Marshall pull and the Mesa cab I know from where you've described it before that you even though this is a two channel amp you would often just run it on the volume knob and keep it on the yeah, so Channel. what I'm going to do, rather than starting off with clean, I'm going to start off with dirty okay. and explain why. Yeah. Um, I, like I said earlier, I just work off the master for the volume and just crank the preamp and get something sensible on the EQ. <laughs> And use the boost on just permanently, yeah, just to push it. Cool. Um, so that's that. Um, that sounds great. That just tightens it up a little bit, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. The bottom end together a bit more. Um, I do sometimes find actually, you know, I find I don't know if you've noticed this the JMP that I use for some reason seems to be a little bit hotter. Yeah, a bit more Just pain. that little bit more. Um, yeah, so, uh, but to, to get it clean, what I'll do is I just leave the amp um, cooking, preamp on full, and I'll just switch the pickups. I'll, uh, It's Sounds not, great. it's kind of a usable clean sound. I don't play a massive amount of uh, clean stuff. Yeah. Do so you find you have to pick quite lightly to get that like glassy sound out of it? Um, usually if I'm playing clean, it's sort of a three piece, pretty raucous band. So no, I just, I normally just smack it. It's just, um, I've just rolled it back a little bit more. Yeah. I don't, the drop in volume as well, um, never really causes that much of a problem because uh, usually it'd be a, quite a section in the song. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a. I wouldn't class it as a workaround, but it's uh, um, it's functional. Yeah. Cool. So with the for me with that cab, um, I don't. 
I mean, it's totally usable. Mm. Um, I like vintage thirties. Um, I think these these amps would have traditionally been with a, a greenback anyway. Right. Um, or some kind of H or something. Yeah. From the, the the blackbacks from the seventies. Um, so I'd I don't know if I possibly rather I'd have no problem using a Mesa anyway. It kind of beefs things up a little yeah. bit, I find. What, the cab? The cab. Yeah. Just gives it that extra little bit of grunt. Um, Sounds a little bit more, maybe it's the speaker, but it's, I think it's a combination of both the construction and the speaker, but it's a little bit more scooped, isn't it, than the, yeah. than the Marshall cab, I think. Yeah. Um, I quite like the... I, th I find them amps to be really lively anyway. Yeah. So, um, and like you said early, dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, they um, any loss of that from a cab isn't such a massive problem to me if I'm using that. Mm -hmm. So there's one thing that this amp will do um, that a JMP won't do on its own, but we might be able to coax some metal sounds out of it with a pedal as well. But I think it's worth having to listen to what it sounds like all out and out. Yeah. Uh, is that on channel four? Yeah. <laughs> These things come with a um a foot switch, a massive Yeah. They call it the what is it the King controller or something. Yeah. It's like nine switches <laughs> on it. You don't have to run around the back of the amp and change it <laughs> on a gig. So let's check this out. Yeah, should we? Okay. I think the, um, the Marshall Cab though does that stuff really well. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's. Um, I think they're tight. I mm. think they're a really, really good, really good cab. <laughs> All right, let's try and get that with the JMP. Okay. That's a class metal sound, but I think a lot of that is the the playing, the, <laughs> the way you attack it as a as a player right. for the sounds. Cool. Um, but yeah, a man from 1978 can do modern yeah. metal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's just a classic combination of um, JCM 800 style amp with a tube screamer. In front yeah, of it. I think that's. Gets you um, it's just a classic combination. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, after, I, I personally I had some fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I just, th again, the reason I wanted to do this is uh, these days with just about everything from anything you can think of, there's this camp over here and there's that camp over there. Yeah. Where you've got Gibsons, you've got Fenders, yeah. um, you've got Marshalls and you've got Mesa Boogies and it's all good. Yeah. They, you can swap over, you can have both, you can mix and match, it's all good. I think there's, I think that every one of these four bits of kit here is just an awesome bit of kit. Mm. Um, you can interchange them, you can play loads of different styles on them. Um, yeah. And it's also to show that even though we're like proud of the stuff that we make here, we still have all this stuff as well, don't we? Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's, I mean, you've got a, Mesa Boogie, I've got a Mesa Boogie, yeah. you know, Marshalls. I think it's good to understand what other people do, mm. how they've done it through the years, and um, learn and put your own slant on things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. 
All right then, well, as usual, please subscribe to the channel, guys. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And let us know your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below, and we'll catch you in another video very soon. Thank you.